In this video, I want to derive the generating function for Bessel functions. Uh, and in particular, what that means is that I want to show that uh, this function right here, e to the x over 2 times t minus 1 over t, if you expand this function in terms of t, then what you find is that all of the coefficients are given in terms of Bessel functions, j sub n of x. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to expand the left-hand side in terms of a series, and then we're going to try and manipulate that until it looks like the right-hand side. Okay. So the first step, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to uh, break this into two exponentials, right? We have e to the x t over 2 minus, or times e to the minus x over 2 t. So e to the x t over 2, e to the minus x over 2 t. And then we can write this using Taylor's theorem as two sums, one from m equals 0 to infinity, xt over 2 raised to the m over m factorial multiplied by some k equals 0 to infinity minus x over 2t raised to the k over k factorial. Okay, um, good. We can uh, simplify this a little bit, right? So we can pull out both, both sums. So we have some m equals 0 to infinity sum k equals 0 to infinity. And then we have minus 1 to the k divided by m factorial k factorial x over 2 raised to the, well, what do we have? We have x over 2 to the m, x over 2 to the k, so x over 2 to the m plus k. And we also have t to the, well, t to the m minus Okay, so we've just we've just combined these terms right here into something that looks like this. And this is already encouraging, right? Because uh, this is already starting to look a little bit like our Bessel function, right? We have these two factorials in the denominator, and we have our x over 2. Uh, the only thing is that we need to make these two factorials communicate with each other in order for this to start looking more like, uh, more like a Bessel function. So how are we going to do that? Well, the way to do it, the way that I'm going to do it, is by... Uh, is by re-indexing the sum, so that way these two start to talk to each other. And in particular, I'm going to take our, our index m, and I'm going to rewrite it as k plus n. So I'm, I'm sort of mixing these these this m right here up with this k, and then this new index n right here. And so if we do this, then what happens? Well, our sum over k, our sum from k equals 0 is unchanged, right? We didn't mess with k, we're, uh, but our second sum gets changed. We now can write this as k plus n equals 0. So that's m up to infinity. And then we have minus 1 to the k over k plus n factorial k factorial multiplied by x over 2 2k plus n t to the n. Okay, this is good. And also just note that this this index down here, we, we wrote this as k plus n equals zero, but we also could have written it in maybe a more familiar way where we could say that sum k equals zero to infinity, sum n equals minus k to infinity, minus one to the k over k plus n factorial, k factorial, times x over 2 to the 2k plus n times t to the n. Okay, so all I've done here is just to change this, or the way that this is written down here. Um, yeah, so, so k plus n equals 0 is also known as n equals minus k up to infinity. Okay, great. So we're just about done. Um, the only thing left is to make one big notice, right? So really what we want is a sum from n equals minus infinity up to infinity. Um, and then our Bessel function. And here we have something that looks exactly like a Bessel function, right? So we have our sum from k equals 0 to infinity, and then this term right here, which looks exactly like what we want. This looks exactly like the series form of, uh, our, of our Bessel function of the first kind. But our sum over n just goes down to minus k. It doesn't go to minus infinity. So what's going on here? Well, let's notice that. Let's notice that for n less than minus k. Let's say that we're trying to go all the way down to minus infinity. So what happens if we look at, say, n equal minus k minus 1? Well, for n equals minus k minus 1, what happens? We have, in the, denom in the denominator here, this term, k plus n factorial. So if we have 
if we have uh, n equal to minus k minus 1, then we have minus 1 factorial. Well, minus 1 factorial, that blows up, right? There's this whole region on the left-hand side of the gamma function, which for negative integer values blows up. And so what that means is that if this blows up, then this whole thing uh, ends up being equal to 0. And so that means that for n equal to minus k minus 1, or minus k minus 2, or minus k minus any integer up all the way to minus infinity, um, that's just 0. And we can always add 0 to this, and it won't change the, uh, the expression at all. So that means that we can write this as sum k equals 0 to infinity, sum n equal minus infinity to infinity, and then the same thing right here. All because the extra values that we accumulate by going down to minus infinity all contribute 0. They all contribute 0. Okay. Great, so now we are basically done. Um, the last thing to do is to just note that uh, this sum over k right here is exactly equal to our series definition for Bessel functions. And so, and so we see at long last that this is in fact equal to sum n equal minus infinity to infinity, j sub n of x tn, great. The last thing I'll uh, I'll note before finishing this video is that um, with this result right here, we can derive a few more uh, interesting properties for free. Uh, so the first one is uh, if we take t, so if we do a change of variables with t going to e to the i phi, uh, then in that case, what we find is that uh, this term right here becomes, this left-hand side becomes e to the x over 2 times e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta, or I guess I should say phi, phi, um, which right here, um, we, we know from, from trig, this is equal to e to the i x sine phi, right? And then this is equal to, we can use this, this generating function right here, this is equal to sum n equal to minus infinity up to infinity, j sub n of x e to the i n phi. Okay, so this is another way that the generating function is sometimes written uh, in terms of these e to the i n phi's. And so this is this is nice because it makes, uh, it, it touches Fourier series. So we're sort of saying that the Fourier series for this function right here is given in terms of, uh, in terms of this series. Um, so that's interesting. Um, the last thing I'll do, which is sort of a, a cool property to know is that if we take this identity right here and we substitute in theta or phi equal to zero, phi equal to zero, then we get exactly, well, e to the zero, that's one, one, and that's equal to uh, e to the i n phi of zero, that's one. So sum n equal minus infinity to infinity j sub n of x. And so this is kind of a cool fact, right? We're, we're saying that if you sum up every single Bessel function, or every single integer valued Bessel function, uh, you get one. And so that, that's kind of a, a cool surprising result that uh, is made super clear by considering uh, the generating function like we have here. So I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show a super cool way that you can use this generating function right here to derive uh, integral representations for the special function of the first kind, j sub n of x. It's, it's super, super exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing it, so I hope to see you in that video.